Hi, welcome to Guerrilla Discipleship. My name's Kevin Baker. You have probably heard uh, this question before, maybe in a little different format, but I'm going to present it to you. If I had the ability and I could offer you either of these choices, one would be I'll give you a million dollars right now, or the other is I'll give you a penny now that's going to double every day for the next 30 days. Which would you take? Now, you know, a lot of us think, oh my gosh, a million dollars right now. But actually, if you play out the dot, the penny that's going to double every day over 30 days, that's going to end up being over $5 million. It's the power of multiplication. And one of the things that is clear in our Western church context is that for a variety of reasons, a long time ago, we left off or we gave up on this idea of multiplication. We read in Acts chapter 2 and other places in the Bible about God just multiplying the church. 3,000 people were added to the church that day, or every day more and more people uh, were added to the church. Daily people were being saved. Those kinds of stories. But for most of us in our lifetime, in terms of actual experience, We've only seen churches that were addition-centered. We've seen, oh, our church gathered, uh, you know, 30 new people last year, or 10 new people last year, or maybe even 100 new people last year. But we've not seen multiplication. And I want to tell you that I think part of the reason that we haven't seen multiplication in our churches is because we have lost the multiplication mindset. If you're going to think of multiplication, you have to think differently than if you think addition. For example, most of us in the church today think about, well, the ministry of attracting people or helping people to come to know Christ or witnessing is really in the hands of the leaders. And so that's an additional an addition model where we say certain people are going to focus on bringing new people in certain people have as their goal to basically make sure that this organization is growing. I'll help if I can. I'm certainly not interested in hindering the growth, but it's not my job to really help the church grow. I'm here because I need spiritual growth and I need spiritual help, and there are things that I want for me and my family. See, that's a, that's a consumer model, really, but it's an addition model because what we've said is that only certain people, imagine this, imagine that your body uh, decides that only a couple of cells are going to grow. You see, the whole idea of our bodies is that everything in our bodies is multiplying. We're constantly multiplying blood cells and skin cells and all sorts of parts of our bodies are just constantly renewing and refreshing. Multiplication means that every single item is in the process of reproducing. So a, an actual disciple-making movement, which is something only God can do, but we get to participate with God, it means that we've got to have a multiplication mindset, that we have to realize that for multiplication to happen, I not only have to be a participant myself, all of us do, I've got to help multiply, but I have to do my work. I have to do my witnessing or my discipleship, my discipling in such a way that it can be replicated easily. It has to be easily repeated or it will never multiply. That's why one of the things that's happened in the church is that we've made things very complex here in the Western church model. We've made things uh, overly complicated. We've made sure that everybody had to have a lot of training. We, we expect people to be well-trained. But that model gives us a high amount of control, or at least we feel like we've got a lot of control, but it diminishes the possibility of multiplication because it says that only a few people after a long period will ever be able to add to the system. But multiplication is exactly what Jesus did in the kingdom through all of the disciples. He had 12 that he gathered and he poured into, and he poured into them in such a way that they could replicate exactly what Jesus had done with them, and then he sent them out to do it. 
Then he sent 70 out in pairs to do the same thing. On the, the um, model of the first church on the, on the day of Pentecost, you had the gathering of the 120, and then all of a sudden, because of the preaching, 3,000 were added. And then again, the Bible says, and daily. Now, how were those folks added daily? Well, because the church was talking in, in the people of the church were talking in the communities. They were talking to their neighbors about what experiences they'd had, what they had found, the truth that they had discovered. And so when everybody is telling one, that's like taking the penny and saying, I'm going to double it every day for 30 days. And instead of having a million dollars at the end of 30 days, I'm going to have over $5 million because that doubling process, that multiplying process so that means when we're talking to people about what God's done in our life, we want to keep things simple. We want to help them, and, and every person that we're talking to, we want to talk to them about the, the faith and about Jesus and about God's love in a way that they could turn right back around and talk to someone else. It can't be deep theological things all the time because, well, that's not how we encounter God on a day-to-day -day basis. Often it's just small things. I can replicate small things, and the replication of those small things in the lives of, life of, uh, lives of others who could also replicate those small things, man, that's where you see multiplication. So multiplying movements, movements are, are a process of multiplication. It's a, a gathering of multipliers that begin to see God use their faithfulness to build his kingdom that multiplication process is a different mindset. And so I want to ask you, are you in the addition mindset? Boy, I hope my church adds another one or two people, or it was nice to see that somebody joined the church the other day. That's a very much addition mindset. Or are you thinking multiplication, which you're then asking yourself, who am I sharing the good news of God with? How am I sharing it? Am I am I sharing and witnessing to God's love in such a way that the people that I'm touching could turn around and touch someone immediately. Again, I, I know this is, gets tiring after a while, but think about the pandemic. The pandemic is, 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 has spread so fast and become such an issue in our culture and in our world because all I needed to do was to be immediately exposed and after about 24 hours, I could then expose someone else. I didn't have to work at it. I didn't have to do anything. It became almost a natural part of me, my breathing or my coughing or my sneezing, that now that's being expressed out, multiplied. In fact, I could, ex I could actually uh, perhaps uh, sneeze and multiply the pandemic or the flu or whatever it is. I could, I could multiply it out to three or four people. That's where the gospel becomes very exciting. When I begin to have ownership in the message and in the kingdom building that God's invited me into, remember, Jesus said the harvest is ripe, but he's looking for laborers, multipliers, because the kingdom will multiply through us. One or two of us who are multiplying, well, we'll make some impact, but when all of us have a multiplication mindset, couple of things I want to just encourage you in terms of the multiplication mindset. And we've done a little bit of this together. I want to just remind you. That means that you have to have your story ready. You have to be able to share in 15 seconds or two minutes what God is doing in your life and what God means to you. And practice that. Get that. Write it out. Get yourself to the place where you could say, this is what my life was like. This is what my life is now. And here's how God impacted that that you could say that over coffee in, in a, a, a grocery store line or something, that that would be just, that would flow out of you. And if it's not something that you're used to doing, we all need to practice at those things. And that allows us to be prepared to give a reason for the hope that we have. It allows us to be ready to be used as multipliers. But then I got to think about, I want to share my story in such a simple way. I don't want it to be complicated. I want to do it in such a simple way maybe tied with one, just one verse of scripture or something that someone else could share my story or that my story impacting them could then cause them to share their story in such a way that three or four people hearing them could also find that they are drawn into God and that that simple sharing of that story. 
That's why we've been talking about getting about five or 10 Bible stories. Like, for instance, uh, recently my daughter-in-law was uh, ill and she was in the hospital. She was having some uh, postpartum bleeding. Well, that the, uh, what the story in the Bible does that make you think of? How about the woman who had 12 years of, uh, of bleeding, of hemorrhaging? I'll bet my daughter-in-law could, could relate, even though she didn't have to go through 12 years, thank the Lord. It's, it was something that was frightening, and, and she couldn't control it. In the scriptures story, the woman who had the 12 years of bleeding, the hemorrhaging, she would have been considered unclean by the whole culture, untouchable because of something that she couldn't do anything about. And yet when she touched the hem of Jesus's robe in faith, desperately asking for him to heal her, God did a work, a miraculous work. And so just to share that story with someone as you're talking with them and praying with them and, and you ask, how can I pray for you today? And they say, you know, I've had this illness. And you say, could I just quickly tell you a story about a woman who had a long illness and how she just was able to be miraculously healed by simply reaching out to touch Jesus. That story said in a very simple way can now be repeated and will stick in their hearts and their minds. And they can say, you know, if they go home, they can say, I was talking to someone today and they told me this simple story out of the Bible. And and man, I really just could see myself reaching out to touch the hem of Jesus's robe. And I prayed and you know, something's happening. Those are the kinds of things that can multiply. And so when we begin to think of wanting God to create a movement, and a movement is that disciples are reproducing disciples, leaders are reproducing leaders, churches are reproducing churches. The whole kingdom of God is multiplying in our culture. Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing if, if next year thousands of people that were once far from God, were coming into a relationship with God under the kind of circumstances where they were also turning right back around and sharing that message with others that would also, um, it wouldn't take long if a penny doubled every day for 30 days is over 5 million, then how many of us is it going to take to double over 30 days before a huge impact of discipleship and disciple-making is felt in our communities, in our family, and in our culture. We can't do this work without God, but God has decided that he wants us to participate and partner with him in this work. We get to be witnesses of what God is doing. We get to be instruments. We get to go into the harvest field. We don't have to come up with the seeds. We don't Often, we're not even the ones plowing the ground. God has already laid the foundations of all of this, and God's inviting us to be simply willing to be a witness, to be a a person who would be able to be interrupted, that we might be a multiplier of God's kingdom by the power of God's Spirit. I hope you'll begin to think about multiplying. Think about this in other areas of your your life. Perhaps are you an addition person in other places in your life? And is God inviting you to think in terms of multiplication? It really is a different mindset. And if we're going to see a kingdom growth movement, if we're going to see the kingdom of God grow, where the whole community of, of what that we live in is changed, where saturation of disciple making begins to make a difference in our counties and in our states and in our regions, it's because all of us are going to begin to take on a multiplier mindset. I pray that that will make a difference in your life and that we can join together as those who God is using to multiply the love, power, forgiveness, and goodness of God throughout our whole communities. I so am grateful for you being a part of guerrilla disciple making and uh, guerrilla discipleship. I'm grateful that you plug in with us. And again, as always, if there's something that we can do to bless you, if there's a way that we can resource you, please let us know. You can send any correspondence just to me, kbaker at oakdale.church. I look forward to hearing from you. God bless you, and we'll see you again next week.